Lofke Santos, paste and press clippings and pictures collected by his family. Lofke Santos was born on September 25, 1879 in Pasi, which is part of Rizal province. His father, Isladislaw Santos, is a publisher and his mother's name is Victoria Canseco. In the article Tagalog Laureate's Legacy, it was mentioned that Loke had three children, namely Luwalhati Reyes, Lacambini is Garcia, and Makaaraw Ki Santos. This is the picture of Love Ki Santos with his wife, Semyona Salazar. This is the picture of Love Ki Santos together with his family during the UNESCO awarding ceremonies. Love Ki Santos changed the first letter of his middle name from C to K to show his patriotism for our country. Elki S. was a nationalist even on his war job. Nationalism, published in Manila on July 11, 1956. Mang Openg studied the medium of his art, language in this case, proving into civilist structure and analyzing its essence if possible. It also took him into sister studies of grammar, vocabularies, rhetorists, and literature, the end product of which was the first drop of the balarila. Lofki Santos was a prolific writer. His poetry alone would fill ten volumes, his other novels, ten more, and his essays, including Spanish, maybe another 10. Some of the poems he wrote using one of his pen names of his literary works, the best known is the Banaag at Sikat, which is even his service critics say. The work is a masterpiece. The story, the characters, the setting, the atmosphere, the movement, and of course, the language are all distinctly Filipino. He is also a professor at the University of the Philippines from 1937 to 1941. Love Santos was the director of the Institute of National Language from 1941 to 1945. This is the awarding of medal to Love Key Santos. Parangal sa wikang Pilipino Parangal sa mga manunulat ng Tagalog Propatria Awards Honors for Mang Openg Love Key Santos as one of the seven outstanding writers. This award given by Taliba na Ninang Wika or Taniyo. During the Andres Bonifacio Day ceremonies, he was included in the nomination for the presidential awards, among other Filipinos, in addition to their outstanding accomplishments in their respective fields, have contributed to Philippine progress and culture by their nationalistic approach. He was awarded the Presidential Award with President Magsaysay pinning him the Medal of Merit. Personally, presenting the citation made in Tagalog, where the first was in English. Lofki Santos had been in the historic first Philippine Senate on 1916 with Quezon, Palma, and other nationalists of his times. When the Senate was created by provision of then recently passed John's law. 
assassinator in 1920 to 1921, he made recommendations for the election of provincial governors instead of appointing them. Pulovki Santos also worked for the inclusion of Andres Bonifacio Day as an official holiday. Pulovki Santos retired on January 11, 1958, was asked if the youth would be interested in reading his novel, which is The Banaag at Sikat. He commented, I gave hope. Lof Ki Santos was died on May 1, 1963 at the age of 86. The people cannot forget Mang Openg, especially when nationalism or the national language is invoked. Because Mang Openg and the national language go together. You can think of one without the other. Dream of the day when the kings will disappear. People will live under the rule of law. All people will be equal and will enjoy complete distance and equal comfort in life. When the father forced them to go home to their town, he obeyed, but he thought. The companions in the field and the household helpers their rights. In the father's anger, he was kicked out and rejected as a son. He returned to Manila and encouraged Tintai to join him even though he was married. Because he is against ceremonies and strongly believes in free love. Delphine is not an anarchist but a socialist. He did not seek to lose the government, but like Belefe, he was against the accumulation of wealth for a few people who enjoy comfort while thousands are starving, suffering, and dying in poverty. He is also against children inheriting their parents' wealth. He is a poor orphan raised by an aunt. While studying law, he worked as a writer for a newspaper. He is Belafa's friend and ally, although he is not as radical as he. Felipe wants to achieve their goal early, measure it violently, while Delphine's desire is too slowly. Plead the people to eliminate the ignorance of masses and the greed of a few rich people. Through the gradual introduction of the principles of socialism into the Philippines, John Ramon has two young daughters and a married son. The girls are Talia and Mimi. Talia fell in love with a lawyer, Madlang Layun. Their wedding was very noble and very expensive. Something that for Felipe and Dauphine is an example of the corruption of the social system that happens to the rich without sense if they squander money while thousands of citizens are starved of food and other basic necessities of life. With Felipe's help when she was living in Don Ramon's house, Dauphine met and fell in love with many. Don Ramon is against Delphine's love for his son because it is poor and secondly because it openly declared its socialism in a conversation between the two of them in the bathhouse in Antipolo. This objection did nothing. Their love was powerful enough to make them pregnant. When Talia and Madlang Layon found out about Minnie's conditions, he couldn't keep it a secret from Don Ramon. Don Ramon was angry. It hit Mini and almost killed him. At Madlang Layon's request, Don Ramon agreed to marry Mini to Delphine, but made a will that leaves all the 
well to his two children. Minnie was disinherited. Minnie enjoyed a life of poverty in the vintage house. From time to time, if in dire need, she would buy clothes and pawn her jewelry as a young woman. This made Delphine and his sister very sad and ashamed, but they had nothing to cover up. In the beginning, Minnie was besetted by two sisters, especially Talia, and sent money and clothes, but the visitation gradually stopped. So did the aid sent. Meanwhile, Don Ramon, at the scale of his social shame, due to Minnie and Delphine's blasphemy, set sail for Japan. The United States and Europe, accompanied by a favorite servant. He has no intention of returning to the Philippines. He forgot the destruction he had done to the honor of many women he had been with. The only thing that planted in his mind was the loss of his own honor in the eyes of society because of Minnie's actions. Meanwhile, Minnie gave birth to a baby boy, wanting to prepare a party for his son's baptism. Changing the costumes, Minnie pawned her earring. Despite this Delphina's protest against all the luxury, the godfather of the baptism was Felipe, who had not only refused his friend, but was also against the baptism ceremony. As an anarchist, he is against all social formalism in the majority of the main attendants, whether they were confident or not. Delphine almost lacked what they had prepared. Thank goodness, and the cook knows the tactics that can save such an event. Was killed by his conspirator in a hotel in New York. When the body arrived at the port, all the workers in the tobacco factory meet the order of Don Philemon, Don Ramon's partner, who warned that all those who did not meet would not be fired next Saturday. Among those who brought the body to the Philippines was Roberto, the Tintai's brother who has been missing for a long time. After traveling around the Philippines, accompanied by a Spaniard, he borrowed a small sum of money from. He was sold or sold to a friend who served on a crow. Because of this, he was able to visit various countries in Africa and Europe and then live in Cuba and California. Finally, she told in New York. There, he met and became friends with a fellow officer of Don Ramon, who lived in a hotel near the bar where he served. Roberto told Felipe that Don Ramon was killed because of his cruelty to his fellow servant. Don Ramon's funeral was lavish, just like Talia's wedding. Don Ramon's rich family carried it to the grave. Uncle Goli of the luxury of poverty and suffering of many citizens. For example, Delphine and Felipe were left behind, caught off in the exchange of opinions and beliefs. Felipe remembered the fitful conditions of his fathers, companions, and servants. Delphine spoke of the hopelessness for the poor citizens, while the right of parents to inherit wealth and power to their children's rest in the law. They remembered the widespread ignorance and superstitions, the blind fate. It would take a long and eternal rebellion against the existing ones. Time demands more heroes. Socialist thoughts must spread not only in one country but throughout the world before real and complete success can be achieved. Felipe and Delphine discussed the history of anarchism and socialism. It spread in Europe, Africa, and the United States. 
Philippe said that some lives whitewashed by the growth of poor ideas are few if compared to the many people who are tortured every day. However, Delphine stance was firm against any method that would lead to the bloodshed. Despite this difference in their stance, they were united in saying, as they left the grave when it was getting late, let's go, let's fight, and pass the stress of the night. Music